Hey guys, it's Ed from Experimental Airlines with another airplane scratch build design idea for you. This one I call the Photon and it's a 60 inch wingspan sport motor glider made entirely of Dollar Tree foam board, colored packing tape, and hot glue. It's got a 60 inch wingspan, 5 inch airfoil cord, two sections of arm and wing with one and a half inch control surfaces. It's got a two inch outer diameter tubular fuselage which is two sections really one full section and one half section tapered at the nose ramped at the rear it has a pretty standard tail with a 14 inch horizontal stabilizer 7 inch vertical stabilizer while the photon is quite capable of just gliding around upright for half an hour or more on a typical battery charge it's also capable of doing some mild aerobatics and loops under power as well as gliding. Uh, additionally rolls and some pretty interesting uh, aerobatics uh, as well if you the pilot have the skills. The construction is really not that much more complicated than simple planes such as the noob tube except that it uses two wing sections and takes advantage of some other embellishments such as the tapered nose the kissing tape technique for the trailing edges, the wraparound technique for the leading edges, just to get the greatest possible performance. All of the exterior of the plane is pre-covered with colored packing tape. I get mine from tapebrothers.com with sparing use of duct tape where needed for covering contours such as the nose taper. The fuselage is one long straight section except for the nose which is tapered and it's a two inch exterior diameter which amounts to a one and a half inch internal uh, paper interval which you'll see in the build video. The power plant is a little unconventional for a motor glider. It's a Turnigy 2826 by 6 turn 2200 kV motor. The reason I chose this motor is because it generates a lot of power for a small package and it does so with a quite small propeller and that small propeller is nice to avoid excessive drag while the propeller is stationary in flight. Another option would be to use a folding propeller, maybe a slower kV motor and uh, allow greater efficiency. Also because this power plant does generate quite a bit of wattage this plane will go really relatively fast. I'm using a 40 amp speed control placed externally but flush with the side of the airplane to provide good airflow to the heat sink. Because the nose is almost completely enclosed for aerodynamic purposes, there's not a great deal of airflow inside the fuselage. Access to the battery and electronics is through this typical hatch. And a 2200 milliamp hour battery balances the plane placed approximately here. The wings are two sections of arm and wing with a 5 inch airfoil section, 1.5 inch control surface. I've chosen to use full span flaperons which I use pretty much just as ailerons except I have mixed in a little bit of a downward flap with the elevator in a certain tra transmitter mix that allows me to really slow this plane down and just have it float ever so gradually. Uh, it's good for thermaling and soaring as well as for landing. With attention to detail you can make your upper surface of the wing and control surface one smooth contiguous section which is incredibly aerodynamic and the trailing edge done with the kissing tape technique makes a thickness only two thicknesses of packing tape that's only four thousandths of an inch thick just like a knife edge right there the lower surface does have this hinge but it's still pretty aerodynamic I prefer to use a carbon arrow shaft as my spar it's placed approximately here inside the wing very strong and light they cost about three to six dollars each the wing tie downs are comprised of three millimeter carbon fiber rods which go lengthwise inside the fuselage. In the front here the rubber bands are semi-permanently attached over the ends of those carbon fiber rods and covered with tape which keeps this fairly aerodynamic and also retains the rubber bands when it's disassembled. And in the rear the carbon fiber rods are exposed for about half an inch and the rubber bands simply wrap over those. The servo leads from the ailerons exit the rear corners of the wing and enter the fuselage at the same location. This provides a bit more aerodynamic flow of air right under this corner as opposed to the usual side mounted uh, pegs that come out that the rubber bands come around and meet here. Instead 
the rubber bands are all in line with the profile of the fuselage itself. Dismounting the wing is performed by removing the servo wires for the aileron, disconnecting those, and then just popping off these rubber bands. and off comes the wing. The rubber bands stay with the fuselage for the next use. These additional rubber bands that rest right against the fuselage provide a bit of additional friction of the wing against the fuselage to hold it in place during flight, but to provide a give spot during landings and crashes so that the wing can actually move a bit as needed instead of breaking. This is a 60 inch wingspan, two sections of arm and wing, and one of the nicer features about this that can be done with really no extra effort is to make it collapsible and that's done by joining the wings using a piece of duct tape here as the hinge but not taping over the top and it's disassembled simply by using an additional spar I've used a carbon arrow shaft and inserting that into a hole you've placed in the end of the spar channel like this inserting that in until it pushes the other one into the opposite wing and it simply breaks down like this. Now you have a 30 inch section of wing which is easier to transport. It also protects the control horns inside the wing so that there's nothing on the outside to poke into your fuselage. And so if you're like me and you tend to transport your, your plane something like this in your car, there's nothing poking out of the wing to go into the fuselage and the, since the wing tie downs are flush with the surface of the fuselage, there's nothing in the fuselage to poke into your wing anywhere all the way around so you can feel confident about transporting that without uh, causing any excessive damage. The intention of these winglets is to provide a fence against the wingtip vortices that occur when the higher pressure air under the wing tries to wrap around and meet the lower pressure air on the top of the wing. This creates a swirling effect of air behind the wing tip. These winglets stop that lateral a span-wise flow of air over the tip somewhat and provide airflow that's straight back which is somewhat more aerodynamic. These also serve as skids for landing so that the wing comes down and touches the winglet instead of the substance of the wing itself. All of the control horns are of course plastic gift card for all control surfaces. I've also buried the rudder servo in the fuselage itself with only the control arm protruding and the elevator servo is inside the fuselage as well. Honestly, if I could have only one plane in my fleet, this would probably be it, because it's so casual to fly, it's easy to take off and land, it's capable of aerobatics as well as just soaring around slowly. So the Photon's turned out to be a really fun plane for me. It's easy to build uh, with a little bit of practice, it's very easy to set up and take down. It flies like a dream, slow and fast. Um, Hope some of you guys will consider making one of these and sharing your videos on YouTube so the rest of us can learn from your experiences. If you have any other ideas and improvements and changes, be sure to include those so we can make our planes better too. So hey, thanks again for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you real soon with a build video for this plane and more airplane designs to come. Take care.